it's some old guy coding here again today. And today we're going to look at uh, uh, turning the router or uh, DeWalt uh, DW660 on and off with G code. Now, uh, as this uh, big red lettering down here, this circuit does not meet any electrical code. Uh, use it at your own risk. It may cause fire, injury, or death. And uh, uh, I'm not liable for any damages or injuries if you decide to go ahead and build this circuit, which I, of course, recommend you do not. But if you do go ahead and build it, um, what we have here is uh, just a line cord, uh, like a uh, computer line cord is what I use, and took the, uh, the uh, uh, computer end off of it and uh, routed that into uh, an electrical box, a uh, four-gang electrical box. And uh, we use the... Um, uh, let's see, I think uh, Ryan called it the uh, Speedstein uh, controller here. So this is, this is just a, uh, a cheap uh, light uh, dimmer circuit, which is uh, probably not at all recommended for running a, a router of any sort. So once again, you're, you're on your own there using it. But uh, it's got two black leads, connect one to the incoming hot and one uh, outgoing. Uh, now the main part of the circuit here is going to be uh, follow along here with me to the uh, solid state relay. Um, this is the type I used. Um, may not be the best, but uh, it seems to work for me. And then, of course, uh, if software turns on the relay via the uh, uh, pin 44 up here, and we'll talk about that in a minute, the circuit power goes through here and on to the uh, uh, outlet. And this is outlet over here is, uh, is uh, the router power. That's where I plug my router cable into. <clears throat> of course, be sure you ground all the ground points. And the neutral just comes straight across over to the neutral side of the outlet. Um, so let's take a look at the switch here once. So normally you'd power things on and off by pushing, you know, this uh, uh, dimmer switch in it. Push it once, it's on. Push it once, it's off. Rotate it for uh, uh, the amount of power you want to use. And normally this uh, solid state relay would be controlling whether this outlet is on or off also. So this has to be on and that has to be on. If for some reason uh, you want to turn it on without software control, um, so we'll bypass this relay with the switch here. So if it's uh, in the off position, it's just a regular single pull, single throw. If it's in the off position, uh, it'll be under software control. Uh, software will have to turn on the SSR in order for anything to happen. But if it's on, we bypass the SSR and, and we don't care what the software is doing. Um, so there you have it. Um, uh, once again, um, if you're going to be changing bits on there, uh, manually getting close to the head and working on it don't rely on the software turning off the uh, turning off the router um, you know something could happen you could bump a go button on the display and it could take off again so as as regular uh, we recommend uh, for your safety to uh, either turn it off here through the push on push off button or just unplug the uh, power cord like they recommend in the manual most likely um, just for your safety you don't want to end up accidentally hitting the LCD control panel and uh, uh, chopping up a finger on your router that would be a, a bummer so uh, on to software control here uh, this uh, minus lead connects to the ground on the ramps card and just like the laser control the plus side connects to the PWM pin 44 now you're going to say, wait a second, we can't do PWM with a standard SSR. It's either on or it's off. And you're absolutely right. So what we have to do is uh, do a router on command by turning the fan all the way up to 255 and uh, turning it off by turning it all the way down to zero or using an M107. So uh, values of 1 through 254 are undefined. I recommend you don't use them. It does make the router make a funny sound, kind of jittery, so I don't think it's very useful. It's not like it's a variable speed control or anything. Um, although I believe they do make uh, solid-state relays that can do that, but I did not research, research that uh, very uh, deeply, so you're on your own there. So as always, make sure that you have the neutral connected up to the uh, neutral side, the correct side of the outlet, and we're switching through the hot side here. 
Um, please wire it up if you're going to wire it up that direction. But of course, once again, I recommend you don't do it because <laughs> it's dangerous and might set things on fire. So what I ended up doing is I had a four-gang um, uh, circuit box um, uh, from the home improvement store, and I put uh, the the um, the dimmer, the control switch, and the uh, power core or outlet in that box, but I could not fit the SSR in there with a with a heat sink attached. And of course, I recommend you use the heat sink. Of course. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea maybe to insert that into an additional box uh, or an additional double gang box just so you have the space somehow and, and cover it up or somehow protect it because it's got live AC pins right on the top of it um, so you don't want to accidentally back into that or bump into it or brush it with your hands um, so obviously that will electrocute you and could kill you uh, it would you know, at least be a bad day so, in, in any case, there we are. Um, now, why would you want to do this to your router? Uh, you know, if for some reason you had built a automated uh, um, tool changer, um, it might be useful to turn the route D router off, the uh, DeWalt uh, DW660 off. Otherwise, you know, you can always just turn it off at the end of your job. Um, and then... Uh, say you have to walk away, which you're not supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> at the end of your job, the router would, would turn off nicely and uh, not be down there uh, uh, cooking away until you get a chance to get to it. But, uh, of course, monitor everything closely. Um, be careful. Uh, don't make this circuit <laughs> for your own safety. And uh, always make sure that the router is physically turned off or unplugged before uh, putting your hands anywhere near the bits. Um, because, you know, like I say, if, uh, if for some reason we're doing some sort of a bit change control and we have a pause and wait for user to resume, um, for some reason, we, if we have that, you just have to bump that um, LCD display and it, boom, it will power back up the, uh, the router and, and, and uh, uh, chew some meat off your finger at best. So there's a couple of references I'd like to uh, point out to you. Uh, the first one is this uh, article, the 2.8 watt $100 laser upgrade for MPCNC. Um, especially this part here where it shows, I believe that's a 100K, a 10K resistor connected between ground and um, the pin 44. And that helps uh, reduce the chance of, um, uh, in this case, it was the laser firing uh, during uh, reset of the Arduino card. Um, and of course it would also help reduce the chances of uh, the router coming on uh, unexpectedly uh, due to a reboot of the Arduino card. So I certainly recommend that 10K resistor. Um, the other thing I'd like to show you is, uh, ref reference you to, is this mostly printed CNC uh, Part 8 laser rewiring um, where I talk about where to change the uh, definition in there to uh, uh, from uh, D9 to pin 44 for output for the fan control. So certainly review those two, that'll be helpful. All right, so here in ESTL cam, let's go into the CNC programs, and like you would the laser under this text area where we have, uh, we would put the uh, uh, M106255 to turn the uh, laser on and the M1060 to turn the laser off. And here we could say when the program starts, being we don't have spindle control in Marlin, and that's what this M03 is here, um, spindle start, instead of that we could just say uh, uh, M106255 and that would turn on our spindle and likewise at the program end, instead of the M105 to turn the spindle off, we can go uh, M1060 or M107, it's the same thing. So, the additionally, let me look back at something here real quick. Yeah, it'd be M106S255, so let me fix that in there. I always forget the S. So in our program start, it would be M106S255. 
255 to turn the router on. In the program end, it would be 106S0, or 107 does the same thing. Um, in the tool change, um, if you had some sort of automated tool change thing that you needed to stop the spindle, you can certainly put that in here too. And of course, that's exactly the same codes that we use to control the laser. In fact, it's wired up to the same pin, except for the laser, we can do uh, variable power, uh, PWM power, 0 to 255. But with the uh, uh, solid state relay installed, that's installed there, uh, it only really enables on and off. So certainly only do that, 255 or, or 0. So, all right. So I just wanted to demonstrate uh, use of the system that I have set up here. Now this is uh, not safe. I don't have a cover on here. I've got my um, relay, solid state relay, outside of the box. I need to cover that up and uh, do something with the wires here. I'm sorry, we've got this turned on. This is set to software control. Um, so what we can do here, of course if we turn it on manually, let me go back there first. If we turn it on manually, you can hear the, the router start. Or we can do it through the or we can do it through the control panel down here. Let me start up Marlin. So I'm gonna go down here to control, temperature, fan speed. We're going to go all the way up to 255. And that starts it. I think we're all the way down to zero, and that stops it. So that's the equivalent of the uh, M106S255 uh, and M106S0 uh, commands. Thanks.